So welcome back to my little series of using this PyPico display using MicroPython. Uh, today I'm going to uh, go to a slightly more modern game, which some of you might have heard of. And uh, I'm not going to talk, I've got some of this uh, preloaded. Uh, my last uh, Jungle Lander game was a bit long, video was a bit long. Um, so I explain about this in my Jungle Lander game. Um, and also I've created these pens which are all my different colours to begin with. Now previously I'd said if you remember in my Jungle Lander I drew a little plane and uh, I'd previously set the challenge of trying to do a little alien. So I've done something similar to that today and I've actually done it so that you can create your own little graphic. Now there will be a better way to do this on Python um, I'm just doing this with the absolute basic knowledge and trying to work out how to do it myself. So you can probably see by the thumbnail that I'm going to be drawing a bird in this game. And uh, I've got a series of rows here, um, which are um, my definition of my bird. Now they're just strings. There'll be a better way again. And each of these numbers represents a colour. Now how I created this was I created a spreadsheet. And I mapped the colours out on this originally. Uh, so you see here black is uh, one. Naught is transparent or where I don't write anything. And I've got some other different colours in there up to colour number five. What the colours are don't really matter because I'm going to change that. But I just wanted to make a generic thing where you could uh, pipe in a grid pattern like this and then use that in your game. And all I did is copied that from my spreadsheet. It would work the same in Excel, copied it, went to MicroPython, went to Thunny. Let's do this and just pasted that in. That gave me the grid. These are all tab marks. I replaced those so that they're all lines. And then I put speech marks and commas over them to make it into each line. So uh, that's, sort of, that's how I did that. So that created my pattern. So that pattern's in sort of a collection or an array, maybe you'd like to call it. First of all, I set the row and the column that I'm working on. Then I go for, through each line and each line is each of these, line one, line two, line three. And then I move through each pixel, I'm calling it in the line. And uh, so here we go. There's a pixel. Make sure that the, and call the color, um, I'm just making sure that this comes out as a text. Um, so I was saying if the colour is not black, then if the colour is one, then set the pen to black. If the colour is two, set it to green, etc. And then at the end of that, I just draw my rectangle. I've got a zoom on it as well. In previous ones, I did like a multiplication to uh, work out what I was drawing um, to, to sort of change the size. So in this one, I decided to hard code a size so I can change that later on. So uh, when I call this... Um, procedure I do the x and y position and um, the zoom and that's there that that's that becomes the size of each pixel essentially once I've gone through that pixel I add one to the column so that I can get to the next pixel after after that when that's when I've got to the end of that row I increment the row and uh, set the column back to zero so uh, that shows me where I'm going to be in the column and the row there. That's what I use for the position on the screen. So this is basically drawing a grid where every number is represented by a block of color. And that's all that does. So uh, this code's going to be in my GitHub. I'll see the link in the description for that. Now, my class bird is very much like the class plane in my previous in my jungle lander video. Exactly the same, really. The plane's flying. It's crashed. It's just called bird and that's it. And it's got an X and a Y position. But in this game, actually, I'm not going to be changing the X position at all. But it just gives me a place to start on the screen. Now I've got pillars and I've got a colonnade to put the pillars. So this is very similar to my jungle and my trees. On this occasion, I've got a pillar and I've got the colonnade to put the lots of pillars in it. Do you know what the game is yet? I'm going to come back to this in a little bit, but you see it's got a hole. I'm going to modify this slightly as well. And then there's a reset here, which draws the pillars. 
only ever going to be three pillars in play and then there's a the reset here's my main loop not doing a lot at the moment makes the pen sky blue clears it draws the pillars not written that yet draws the bird let's make sure that's there move the bird and if button b is pressed then do something print b at the moment so let's just run that and see where it gets us and we'll be able to see what the graphic is i've designed do you recognize it oh well well it's my version of that slightly embarrassed bird embarrassed flying bird now on this i've got the zoom set to eight that's too big for how i want to do it but you'll see if i just change the zoom on this now change the zoom to two that's uh, a smaller little creature there now of course i've got to make him go up and down but if you recognize the game yet you'll know that all you do is press one button to make him go up and he goes down automatically so uh, let's let's work on the movement for this now so if you remember very similar to the other one i've got to check i'm going to check first whether the birds crashed so if because i want everything to stop if it's crashed if bird crashed then and then let me grab this code well that's going to be the next bit so if the bird crashed actually i'd want if the bird is not crashed or of course i could do if bird crashed equals false so if the button a is pressed then well what am i going to do here if the button a is pressed flap got the game yet if we're pressing the button if bird y position is greater than minus 22 don't worry about these numbers i've worked them all out then bird y is bird y take away three so make the bird fall well no actually no let's make the bird fly let's see it's just upside down because of the orientation of the screen and then i'll go else and again if bird y sorry about that you can hear the rain outside the cave whoops if bird is the height of the screen and the height of the screen is in the um is in the defined up here as previously width and height of the screen so so if the bird is less than 25 being about the height of the bird minus the height of the screen then bird y add three to that so let's see whether this works I've done this correctly all right so doesn't look promising right what have i done wrong if not bird crashed display is pressed bird y i think he worked let me try, let me try that again what did i do wrong all oh, right he's going up up and not down oh i know what i've done sorry python is different from some programming languages or programming language i'm used to because you don't have an end and a start of a block it's all to do with the spacing so i've actually done that so if birds that as long as it's that if you're pushing the button you want the bird to go up otherwise you want the bird to drop that's it that's all i've done wrong so there you go my bird will go up and down well it'll go up as long as i press flat all right so that's relatively the easy bit so let's define my pillars so here's the pillars and i said i wanted to do special with that but i'm going to have a whole top and this is just going to make the coding clearer later on and i'm going to have a self whole bottom and i want that to be whole plus 75 and 75 is going to be the height of the hole in the pillar so now um i've got my bird my bird drawing i've got my colonnade i've got score well, i'm going to do a score in this one now let's build my uh, colonnade all right so three 
pillars there approximately I've set my colonnade to empty here and this is where I add add things to it so uh, I'm not going to have pillar in here let's turn that reset on because I forgot that last time so on this bit I got my X there's my range and so I would do colonnade append then pillar and I want the X value which I've set here at the moment the X value to be plus 100 so that's about here on the screen and I'm going to send a hole in and let's close that and close the append and then I want the pillars three across the screen so I'm going to increase the X so X plus equals and I want width divide, divided by three now because I divide the width by three there it might give a non-integer result so an integer being a whole number so I want to convert whatever the answer to that is into a whole number so there you go so in with that now one thing is a problem is I haven't uh, decided I haven't defined what the hole is and I want the hole to be different for each pillar so before I add the pillar let's create the whole value the whole I could have done it down here really but let's just do it up here so whole equals random rand int one comma height minus 100 all right so that should give me a random hole in each pillar and the pillar three across the screen let's run this it shouldn't error I'll run it now just in case but it's not oh it, it, it does error okay colonnade isn't defined have I done it wrong? Colonnade. All right. Is it two L's? Is it one L? Uh, what is it? I don't know. Colonnade. Column. Let's do colonnade. Try again. Oh, no, it's even worse. Self D isn't defined. Oh, no, I'm really going to get myself into a mess. Oh, that's because. Typo there. Self. All right. So, like I said, that shouldn't give any errors, but it does. Because in the real game, if the uh, bird hit the floor, that would be the end of the game. I'm going to leave it for this. It doesn't really matter on this one. OK, so let's... It's not the real game, is it? So that's my pillars. Now let's draw the pillars. So first of all on this, let's set the pen. So I'll grab that bit. I've got to do it for each pillar. So for pillar in colonnade exactly the same as my trees in jungle code from before display set pen and I'm just going to make the pillar white let's draw a rectangle so display rectangle and it's going to be at the position of the pillar 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 X then it start at the top of the screen it's going to be 10 wide and it will go the whole height of the screen all right, and that should, I hope, if I've done it right, that should draw me some pillars on the screen. Three, hopefully. Two, that's all right. The third one is just hiding off the screen here. OK, so that's working perfectly. But we need a hole for Mr. Flying Bird, a confused, embarrassed bird, to fly through. So I could do this two ways. I could have actually drawn the pillar in two bits, but... I think it's probably simpler if because I've got the whole top and the whole bottom to just draw a colour the same as the background on top of it. And now this is going to be where the it's this is going to be it's still going to be in the same X position, but it's going to be pillar whole top. See why I did it like that? And then it's going to be 10 and we decided the pillars were going to be um, 75 high weren't they what did I do that 75 high all right the holes were so hopefully that should now wipe out the gaps at the random position in each hole let's have a look so if you remember this game the bird doesn't fly towards it the pillars actually fly towards the bird so to get that working let's we've got the um, pillars now let's say first of all let's check that the bird hasn't crashed into a pillar to start with so if 
not bird crashed and that will become more important later if the pill if pillar x value is bigger than minus 10 then take one away from the x position then pillar x minus equals one so let's see if that runs it should move the pillars now if i've got it right there we go but of course it moves the pillars off the screen there's the third pillar and then we don't see them anymore so what we've got to do when the pillar over here goes off the screen we've got to add him back to the start again so i'll stop that so the pillar x is is as long as it's bigger than minus 10 so if it is less than minus 10 then we've got to reset the x of the pillar so i'm going to go pillar x equals and width again remember width of the screen i want to do a, a couple more things in here as well i want to move the hole so i'm going to grab that hole code from there again and pillar width equals hole equals that random again pillar hole hole top equals hole can you guess what's coming next pillar hole bottom equals hole and plus 75 again that um, will redefine the position of the hole now just for the excitement let's do something else here because we've gone through a hole successfully hopefully if this is the case score equals plus whoops plus equals one all right we won't see the score or anything but hopefully now as the pillar goes off the screen a new one or the same one comes on again and we can try to fly through the holes which is relatively easy if we're doing it like this all right let's put the uh, score on the screen while we're going there so where should we put the score let's put it under the bird so here's the score so display set pen white and display text i've not used text for a while since uh, doing babu in one of my early videos in this series and we want to do score now because score is a integer value a number i'm going to just in case convert it into a string first just in case this text doesn't like it so there's a the score then i'm going to set it at the width of the screen minus 70 just to guess uh, five down from the top of the screen and then one and five gives me the size of the score so let's see whether that works yeah so now i've got a zero and as each set of pillars go past the end of the screen the score goes up which is a very easy game at the moment so now as usual the most difficult bit is doing the collision detecting now because these sprites can't check whether because then because these aren't real sprites they can't check whether they're hitting anything else on the screen so i've just got to calculate it based on the position so let's um try and work out how to do this then so the crash routine is actually going to be as usual in the bit that moves it's in this bit because this has got the value of each of the objects that's moving so we've got this else bit here but just after that so that's um that resets the pillars but i'm going to say if the bird hasn't crashed so we do that we then check that there and then i'm going to do another thing in this if the bird hasn't crashed again so um you'll just have to believe me for these bits so if pillar x is less than 39 which i've worked out is the beak of the bird on there and pillar x is greater than six now i draw the bird five pixels in so i'm just giving an extra little bit pixel just so he can, his tail can hit the back of it maybe uh, to an extent so if 
it's in that pit. So we only have to check this when the pillars are in the position of the bird because the bird's X never moves. So just if we watch this one, we're checking it there and stopping there and stopping. So let's say if that's now let's check the Y to check whether it's in the hole. So if bird Y is less than pillar hole top or bird y plus 28 and that's the bottom of the bird is bigger than pillar hole bottom if that's the case then bird crashed equals true so hopefully now if we run this as soon as the bird hits the column there you go it has stopped the game game doesn't reset we've not written that bit yet uh, I have got an error on my screen attribute Ella pillar object has no attribute Y oh bird bird crashed pillar oh that shouldn't be pillar Y that should be pillar X of course so this should crash it does let's try it again go to the top of the screen it should crash on the top one and if I'm clever I should be able to oh, but I'm not should be able to now get these through the holes. I was never good with the original game. Okay, so score three. So that's pretty much the game. Let's just do the reset. So down here I had, if the button B is stopped, if the button B is pressed, so reset the colonnade. So make sure the colonnade's empty. Run my reset, which rebuilds if you remember it rebuilds this with the pillars with the holes in to start with and put the bird back to a nice place bird y equals 20 which is the starting position of the bird when i first define the bird here so the bird y is 20 the x never changes for the bird so i can leave that and finally bird bird crashed equals false so don't have to worry about that should start the bird flying so let's uh, run that there he goes crash hit b and it resets again so there we have a flying bird a spider maths embarrassed bird game obviously the bird in the original game has a bit got a bit more gravity on it I'm not calculating gravity there. If someone would like to have a go at that, I'd be happy to see that. But uh, there's another game. Maybe the next video in this series might not be a game. Um, I've got another idea I want to just try. And then I'll come back and think of another game. Maybe uh, let's revisit that Space Invaders and see whether we can do something a bit more complicated. Now I've got that grid. Or maybe let's just put some invaders in it and uh, try and do that. So... Spider Maths Flying Bird Game.